Hello and welcome to another episode of Born to Read. Today is a good day, it's a sunny day, and we are talking about a book I have not read yet, but Tim has. The title is Bloodbot World, and who is it by, Tim? By Pastor Toby J. Sumter. Oh yeah, that, that guy up there in, uh, what's it called? The Badlands? Badlands. Moscow, Idaho. Moscow, Idaho. So, you said something to me about this guy that I thought was surprising. You told me, you said, you know what? This guy is every bit a thinker as Doug Wilson. You said he's, if not more, you said this guy is serious. And and the book is very well thought out, um, very well written, uh, and hard, hard hitting. So what's uh, it about? I, I don't really, the theme, Bloodbot World, so what's it about? So it, it really emphasizes Christ as having authority over the world. Okay. That his blood did something. It said, he says uh, that the gospel is an efficacious announcement of death first. That there had to be something that happened. Um, and that Jesus has uh, an authority over how the world operates. That it's a, a beautiful place. Uh, a place that um, we have life, but because of death. And we have to properly view the death in order to die to our own sins first. Okay. So it's really broad. So it kind of sounds like a summary of the whole Bible. It is in a okay. lot, in a lot of ways. What he, what he does is he, he shows where we've sacrificed our own view of the world okay. uh, and worshiped other idols. Okay. Um, and, in, in a way that we've ended up making Jesus an idol because we worship the wrong Jesus. And he says in it, um, let me see here. Yeah, he talks, he's, he's showing the goodness of what Jesus gives to us. Uh, and he says, uh, he, he quotes Romans 2, or despisest thou the riches of, good, of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Mm-hmm. He says, he gives you a glass of whole milk with peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He gives you the sun falling through the window on a Saturday afternoon, holding a million dancing dust particles. He gave you your wife and the way she smiles when you kiss her on the neck. He gave you your daughter, the way she giggles when you tickle her. Jesus gave you your son and the way he beams when you praise him. Jesus invented the hilarious way a child is conceived and the mind altering way babies are born. Jesus gives you deep joy and that gut aching laughter that hurts so good. It's Jesus who shed his blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. And it's Jesus who crushes your whole being with the astonishing beauty of his mercy. It's just this, the same theme that he runs through is like life is good because Jesus died. And that's, that's what he can, he drives at throughout the entire book um, that we need to then put to death the idols in our own life, that there, there are idols that we have um, that, blind us. He calls it the idols that blind. Um, he says that you must come to the end of yourself, to the end of your goodness, come to the end so that you can finally begin. And for those who know Jesus, the grave, Je- the grave of Jesus is no scary place. The grave of Jesus is glory and wonder because the grave of Jesus is empty. And once you've died with Jesus, you aren't afraid of anything or anyone anymore. So it sounds kind of like, um, <clears throat> When God said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, like on the eagle's wings, therefore follow my laws. It sounds kind of like Toby is, uh, and that really is the, the story of Christianity. It sounds kind of like Toby's taking that story, expanding on it, saying, Jesus bought this world, therefore put to death your idols, follow the law of God, and be God's people. Keep his covenant. So, would you think, would you say that that's accurate? That yeah. he's kind of just... Uh, expanding on the exile theme of God. And that we, he, he really wants to emphasize that we need to live like Jesus lived. Okay. And that means standing up and fighting battles. Uh, and he, he really, one, one of my, my favorite, <clears throat> favorite parts of the book is when he, he kind of illustrates that Jesus comes into the story this is, this is this grand narrative that, that God is telling. Jesus comes into the story um, with authority and acts with authority and it gets him killed. 
And yet the, the picture that we paint a lot of the times of Jesus is not a Jesus who would get himself killed. He's a, you know, he's the, the Eastern European with the blonde hair and blue eyes um, that says peace to you. Um, and, and then you get, you get to the end of the story, you know, with, with the, the building, the, the movies that we see and the yeah. depictions of Jesus are these like, Jesus is really good. And the Pharisees are really bad and uh, they kill him just because they don't like him. But what he illustrates here is that that Jesus isn't a Jesus with any authority. He's not a Jesus that um, would be killed. There, there was no reason to kill him um, if, if we water him down too much. The, the way he, he, he puts it um, is that Jesus, as the, as the authority figure, comes into the story. Um, and it says that Jesus, he says, Jesus rides a white horse and he marches on this world in righteousness, judging and making war. His name is called the word of God and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that he might strike all the nations of the earth for he must reign until all, until he has put all his enemies under his feet. But we've exchanged this Jesus for an imposter with a Nerf gun. <laughs> he rides a repurposed 10 speed th to limit his carbon footprint. He eats free range, a uh, free range uh, chickens because of an article he read one time on the internet <laughs> and tries really, really hard to buy his coffee beans from fair trade sources because the girl behind the counter shows a lot of cleavage. Oh! <laughs> so this is like, this is just a, a really hard hitting. Oh uh, he doesn't, he doesn't hold back in any way, <laughs> Did you hear uh, that? <laughs> but he pushes this and says, this is the this is the Jesus that we worship. Wow. This is the Jesus that came in with authority, and he should, you know Toby should have been a, a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. So he shows he shows us that this is this is the authority that Jesus operates with. I gotta read this. Is that he he comes in with authority and says, "You must do things my way. I'm the king here." When when Scripture speaks of um, him striking the nations with a rod of iron. That's, you, you know, you hear yeah. what the rod is, is a disciplinary tool. Mm. And it says, these nations did not honor me as God. They worship their idols. I've come <laughs> to break them with my rod of iron. And that's a Jesus that has then commissioned us to go into the world and act like real warriors, real men, real uh, Christians. Uh, and, we can't expect to sit back and love our um, love our comfort zones and expect to win the world for Christ. Okay. It, it's not going to happen. Um, and so some of the, some of the stuff again. When I said he's he's hard hitting, uh, he's hard hitting on everything. And I, I what, what so I, sorry to cut you off, but what, what's so at the I'm looking at the table of contents. I don't know how well you have this book memorized, but he, chapter ten is called "Grace Has a Beard." I'm just really interested in what that means. Like, well, we've we've often relegated uh, grace to being a, a kind of a warm hug from God, uh -huh. and when we uh, then act effeminate as mm -hmm. as Christians. Um, okay. What he's talking about there in that chapter is that Jesus was a, a real man, okay. that, that he came, he was a, a physical flesh and blood man that, that walked the earth um, and, it, and that he did specific things. So that, that, okay. that, was, that was part of what he did. Um, and that he was manly? Yeah, and he, he, uses, he uses the phrase, um, grace touches down, mm -hmm. that, that there, was, there was an effect <clears throat> of, what, of what Jesus did uh, on the earth. Right. Um, so I'm kind of thinking this book is not only a exposition expounding and a reiteration of the exile theme of God, but also a anti-Gnostic dissertation. Yeah. Because the blood bought the world. Yeah. He didn't buy this pie in the sky that you want to leave the world for. He bought the world. Right. And grace has a beard. Grace is here. It's here to stay. It's here to restore. It's here to put you back in paradise. Yeah. So this seems like a, a wow. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really like logical minded. So it's kind of hard for me to imagine like, how did this guy think about this? This is basically a guide to the Bible, like almost. A, a guide to the Bible, a guide to Christian living. And when he wants, he wants Christians 
to step out and and live the life that that Jesus would have us to live. Mm, okay. Um, and so what I what I see in the book, one of the reasons that I really loved it uh, was because um, he didn't sugarcoat anything. Yeah. And when, when I said when I said it was well written, he he puts it in a very poetic easy to read it's a nice it's it's a nice flowing narrative that it's it's not complicated to understand mm-hmm. what he's talking about uh, but when he's pushing jesus as the the center of what we need to do and that it's a real jesus there's a real purpose that what we really need to do in in life uh, and all of it kind of unfolds into this this christian life and what what jesus has given to us uh, was there it, anything very practical that just held on to you like something practical from this book where you were like i got to do that well one of the things that he and, and he consistently obviously being a, a presbyterian minister he he emphasizes our love of liturgy and tradition <clears throat> really and, and okay. he and he says you shouldn't love your tradition more than you love christ and so part of that is like he's somebody who even values tradition and liturgy, Mm -hmm. but then says, that's not God. And so when you go to church on Sunday to worship the Lord on the Lord's day, uh, it's about the Lord, not about your traditions and and what you do. Uh, and so when he, he's emphasizing keeping, keeping the real, the main thing, the main thing as the, the old phrase goes, but he wants it to be the right understanding of it not a watered down. Um, it's a hundred proof gospel is really what he's, he's pushing. Um, that that like doesn't hold back. Liturgy is a hammer to drive the nail. It's not the nail. Like right. your liturgy is a means of worshiping God. It's a means of getting closer to God. I mean, I find myself when somebody one time the other week is like, Hey, what do you believe? I literally found myself quoting to them the entire apostles creed because it's just liturgy. It's just in my blood at this point. So, that's interesting. That's wow. Okay. So numbers on a scale of one to 10, what do you think? 10. Really? Yeah. I, really? I, I read it. It, it, it's what, uh, you went through this with somebody too. too was yeah. It? We, we were using it as a, a discipleship mm-hmm. tool. Um, and yeah, it was, it's, it's about 220 pages and it only, I mean, I read it so quickly it was just it was, I, I was i was eating it up uh, I, I loved it like i said it's it's very accessible um and i think what he does is without coming across as condemning uh it's really a, a convicting thing to to examine your own life and examine where there are uh, idols and what idols we've made of things that that we don't even recognize mm-hmm. and so when you think in terms of uh tearing down idols then we really start to see life um, as jesus sees it Mm. Um, that he owns this place that we march we're we're going to war Uh, it's just it's a very 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 good Um, well can i can i borrow it yes as long as i don't dovetail the pages as long as you don't dog ear (laughs) the pages there are two types of people in the world (laughs) those who use bookmarks and monsters (laughs) Well, uh, with I'll that, to, I'll have to buy a bookmark then. <laughs> or I will, I'll give you a bookmark. I'll leave a business card or something. In it, oh, okay, but. cool. So I can call you whenever I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you guys have listened to another episode of Born to Read. We have just uh, talked about Blood Bought World by Toby J. Sumter. He's a minister at Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, oh, oh, it says he's the pastor of Trinity Reformed Church. My bad. But that's not true, right? He was when he wrote it. He was when he wrote it. Oh, okay. Well, this is a great book. Uh, if you guys have not bought it, I would recommend buying it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and that you will benefit in your Christian walk from this episode. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next time.